I'll explain what the temple is because actually this verse, Ezekiel 47, 4, illuminates what the temple is. Um, and, and you know, the, the rest of the description of the temple, I'm, I'm just taking kind of verses here or there that's relevant to our discussion about this uh, emotional language. So this temple is built on this mountain and there's water pouring out from under the, the threshold of this temple. And so like, is the temple built on a spring? Here's more evidence that the temple is or that this is uh, metaphorical because, you know, what, what do we like have pumps under the temple that's pouring forth water? So anyway, <laughs> I don't want to belabor the point. There's water that is pouring forth from the threshold of every entrance to this temple in the north, south, east, and west. And this water, the farther it goes out, the deeper it gets. And so Ezekiel is guided by God to go through this water and he's wading deeper into the water and, and God's like, you see how much deeper this is? And then something really interesting happens. The water from the temple then flows into the ocean and or the sea. And the sea would be salty, right? The ocean would be salt water. Except Ezekiel chapter 47 says that when the, the water from the temple touches the salt water, the sea, it makes the water fresh. And so all of the river fish can live in the fresh water. And uh, eventually, like, all of the water is made fresh. And that's another kind of weird, fantastical element to this story that makes it seem metaphorical. Because normally, when salt water touches fresh water, the salt doesn't vanish. It actually makes the fresh water salty, <laughs> you know? Um, it, the opposite happens. Kind of like... Uh, typically, whenever an unclean thing touches a clean thing, it makes the clean thing unclean. Except when Jesus is involved. And so in the Old Testament, in the Levitical laws, I'm kind of jumping around here, but this is all going to make sense, I promise. In the Levitical laws, unclean made the clean things unclean. However, in the New Covenant, in uh when when Jesus came, that flipped. No longer did the uncleanness conquer. Instead, the cleanness conquered. Jesus touched sick people, and instead of becoming unclean himself, he made them clean. Jesus touched dead people and brought them to life. He wasn't made unclean when instead under um, Levitical laws, he should have, you know, like not, he should have been cast out of the town and, you know, forced to be outside for a week or whatever it is. Um, and so there's this interesting parallel with this water in the temple and this imagery of Jesus and what the gospel actually does. And so I think the temple is something like the church or it's this uh, or it's like you know the body of Christ essentially it's the it's the church it's Jesus Jesus came and instituted this this structure which is the body of Christ and from the body of Christ this water flows and it gets deeper and deeper the farther it goes until it covers the whole earth and makes all of the un or makes all of the 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 salty things, the unusable water, it makes it usable. It makes all the bad water good instead of being corrupted itself. And so I think this is actually a beautiful representation of the Great Commission, where Jesus says, go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and uh, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you to do. This, What this temple is doing is going forth and baptizing the nations with this water. And that is what the metaphor means. And so the water has nothing to do with our, like, we are not immersed in the water. You know, we do not go deeper and deeper into the water of the spirit. The water is the gospel. The water is the great commission. And the fact that it gets deeper and deeper shows that it spreads to more and more people. So it has nothing to do with individual faith. Although, like I said earlier, we can grow deeper in our relationship with God, I believe, of course. But, you know, even if you take this to be a metaphor, it's not even the right metaphor. What this is, is a wonderful, beautiful representation of the gospel spreading to the whole earth, which incidentally is very post-millennial. The, the gospel actually covers the world. 
Jesus uh, is king now, and he doesn't lose. The church doesn't lose. The church wins, and the gospel covers the world. Uh, the you know a lot of people who are pre-millennials uh, who say like you know Jesus is going to come back. There's going to be like great horrible suffering. Let's say that the gospel is preached to the nations, but nobody actually believes in it. The world is a horrible, awful place. Then Jesus comes back, and at that point, there's no second opportunity for people to believe the gospel. This is not what's happening in Ezekiel's vision. The temple comes, then the gospel spreads. So that's very post-millennial. Like the gospel is spreading from the temple that, you know... uh, uh, dispensationalists and premillennials absolutely admit that this temple is describing the millennial kingdom, which, hey, I agree. 